I think the greatest use of equations is in solving word problems. We're going to start a discussion now of a variety of word problems, and we're going to think of word problems as falling into certain families. Uh, there'll be the family of mixture problems, the family of distance problems, and, and so forth. To begin the discussion, though, let's understand the, the overall concept of the idea. We start with a problem written in words. Now, the problem written in words is called a verbal description. We want to arrive at a point where we take the verbal description and interpret it in a mathematical form called an equation. So this, this then would be the, the mathematical model for uh, our solution. Well, midway between these two is a verbal model. The verbal model has aspects of the verbal description and the equation. Generally, we have some words here and also some operations uh, symbols that guide us toward the equation. Now, before we get into this or as we move toward this idea, remember that from your past experience, there are certain key words that trigger the notion of uh, particular operations, mathematical operations. For example, addition is indicated when the word sum is used, because the sum is the answer in an addition problem. More than increased by all indicate addition. Subtraction is indicated when the word difference is used. Less than, reduced by, decreased by, those all indicate subtraction. Multiplication uh, cross up when the word product is used, or twice an amount means two times the amount. Uh, times, uh, like this times that means to multiply, of often means times as well. Division is indicated when the word quotient is used, or when the word per is used in a problem. Now, there, there are certain situations involving these words that I want to bring out very specifically. When, when you have a phrase like the difference between x and 5, the word and is used here. And a lot of times it's thought that and always means to add. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It's, this is just telling us we, we want the difference between this item and, all, and that item. Now, in this situation, we're subtracting, and the question is, which do we subtract from the other? Well, when the word difference is used, you, you start with the first item mentioned after the between. It's between this and that. Well, it's this subtract that. That's the idea. So it's x minus 5 that we're talking about here. Now, it's not always the case that the items uh, in this process will occur mathematically in the mathematical expression in the same order that they do up here. For example, if we have 7 less than y, you see it's not 7 minus y. It's actually 1 minus 7. It's 7 smaller than an amount that we presumably have. So it's actually 1 minus 7 here. So we need to be cautious about that. The quotient of some amount and some other amount. Here's one of those situations where we, we know that we have a division problem, and we'll indicate the division problem in a fraction. But which of these two items do we put in the numerator and which in the denominator? Well, it turns out that when we have the quotient of something and something else, then the first item uh, is the numerator, and the second item is the denominator. So this is the quotient of x and 8, and it would be written like this. Let's look at a particular problem to practice the transition from the verbal description into the equation. And that's what we're concentrating on here. I don't want to concentrate on the family of problems that this comes from at the moment. The problem says, items in a store are reduced by 20%. Find the original price of a suit selling for $140. So we want the original price, and the sale price is actually the $140. To start the process, you, you you simply think of the general idea in the description that's going on here. How do we how do we calculate a discount? How do we calculate the sale price? You see, that's the idea. And we're going to write that down using words and mathematical symbols. So we would write something like this. If we take the original price and we subtract some discount, then we get the sale price. And so, so here we have that, that kind of halfway between verbal description and equation. Now let's tweak this a little bit. 
we will need some some labels uh, here for certain items like the original price because that's what we're looking for. It's just find the original price. And we need a label for this in just a minute. All right, what about discount? How do we calculate discount? What that's what is that all about? Well, it turns out that the discount actually contains a hidden operation because the discount is some 20%, as it says here. These, these items are reduced by 20%. So how do we calculate the amount of the discount? Well, it's 20% of the original price. Aha, we've discovered the, the hidden operation. It is 20% of, means times, original price. So now we're ready to, to build our equation. We would say something like let P equal the original price. Let's let, let's let P stand for that. I might write it down if I were working this problem, but in our discussion here, we'll just let it be P. Now, we're going to subtract 20%, and we know that we represent that as a decimal. All means times. The original price we said was P, and then that's equal to the sale price, but we're told that the sale price is $140. Now, this is really what I, what I wanted us to concentrate on on this problem. The answer to it is not terribly important. If, if you had uh, stopped the tape, though, and attempted this problem a few moments ago, and you have an answer, and you're, you're just dying to know what the answer to the problem is, it's $175. That was the original price of the, of the suit. But at any rate, let, let me elaborate just a little bit more on this. In order to perform this calculation, P minus 20% P, or 20 hundredths P, remember that this is 1P. So you're going to take the, the coefficients here and collect them. So it's 1 minus 20 hundredths. You see we'll give 8 tenths or 80 hundredths. P equals 140. And now you can divide on both sides by 0.8 to find P. But the idea, the, the emphasis here is to go from this form into this mathematical model. I mentioned earlier that we can consider that word problems fall into certain families. These are some of those families. Word interpretation problems or consecutive integer problems would fall into that category. Percent problems, we just looked at one of those. Distance, mixture, problems involving formulas, proportion, combined work. Now, we're going to take a look at, at a problem or two in each of these families. We can't possibly look at all of the nuances involved in these problems because there just isn't enough time. But we're going to hit the high points here. And the purpose of examining problems in families like this is because it's often the case that there is a style of thinking or a concept that prevails in one family and another that will allow us to jumpstart our thinking toward a solution. Let's begin with word interpretation. Here's one such problem. One number is one-fifth of another number. The difference between the two numbers is 76. Find the numbers. Now, at first glance, you might think, well, gee, we're looking for two numbers, so let's let x be one number and y the other. Well, that is a technique that would be workable here, but we haven't talked about solving equations using two variables. So let's try to represent the two numbers using one variable. And that's not too difficult to do, because in problems like this, it's often the case that we have some kind of description of one number in terms of the other. That is, that notice here, it says one number is one-fifth of, now, as soon as I see is, I, I, I might uh, understand that this is a description of this item. One number is, okay, now we're describing that item. And this other item, this other number is used in the description of that number. Now, we always want x to, to stand for the number used in the description of something else. All right, so we're going to let x equal this, this thing called another number. Now, this, this guy is, and here's the description of, the, of this one, it's one-fifth of this thing that we just labeled x. So this one can be labeled one-fifth times x. So one-fifth x is our label for this thing called one number. You 
see, and here we have represented our two numbers. And now it says the difference between the two numbers is 76. So this statement then allows us to build an equation for solution. And uh, we, would, we would go like this. Now, the difference between these numbers here are the numbers. The difference means we take one and subtract the other. So we have x minus 